Never again will we use the police to manage our politics has just once again dispatched the GSU officers to raid the offices of Simba Arati, the Kisi governor, in Gusi Stadium. And these are GSU officers that should be fighting bandits in the Kenya North. While bandits are wreaking havoc to innocent families in Baringo, and we saw just recently of an ugly encounter. But then on some other side, we are actually dispatching GSU units into a political mission. The ODM chairperson, Simbarati, is allegedly under some dummy investigation about a corruption case that is not yet made clear. But he's only seen looks like just bringing the brothers together and questions that many have been asking is why do you deploy gsu to raid the offices of the kisi governor without even a notice of investigation but at what point does it start do you start with the arrests first are gsu officers part of investigation because i tend to think that this year is well equipped by enforcement officers. So probably the, 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 the customary way it happens is some investigation is done, the offices are raided by DS, DCA units or ESCC, after that the governor is grilled and at the appropriate time when there is a need to answer some question, arrests are done. But the main reason why this DCA or why these GSU officers were deployed in the Goosey Stadium raid is actually laughable. Ladies and gentlemen, in this podcast, I want us to delve deep into the drama in Kisi Stadium when Simba Rati confronted the officers until they had to leave the venue. But before that, allow me to present for you our November project. Now, this photo you are seeing here is a photo of me with some parents with kids some five kids that are in need of wheelchair so this was uh, reached out someone reached out to you to me one of our subscribers reached out to me and said because he's been working these kids to help at least purchase some wheelchair for these kids so i had one on one i traveled there it is they they stay somewhere around kibera and i had one on one with the parents so that we have a clear picture of what exactly is the need. Welcome, Team Bold. Yes, Nikohapa Kibera. And uh, as Ali had agreed that I had received uh, some plea for the wheelchair plea, so I decided that uh, this month we settle on that lots of different needs. How and what we've known, they are we getting on the Bebwa. So these are the kids that I want us to support with um, with the wheelchair project because it is something that of course it's going to help them home. so I'm, I'm going to give each mzazi a uh, time and uh, position this mic and we also have else so else pia atongea tukimaliza aya acha tuanze na hapa jina yako mimi naitwa Clarissa Chia ni mzazi wa Castro Mondi Castro ndio huyo eh ah challenge Castro ni gani challenge ya Castro ni venye ako huko shule akiletwa therapy inabidi walimu anambeba wakimleta so i think hiyo licha inaweza msaidia atakuwa mm. anatumekiwa shule shule ama nyumbani pia okay. wow so on this other end this is Castro so we decided to have the parents because the parents are the ones that understand especially the need of watoto. Ajina? Uh, majina yangu naitwa Jacqueline Sayo na mtoto anaitwa Joy Afandi na ko na shida ya CP. CP in full cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. mm. Mkimsaidia na hiyo wheelchair tutakuwa mmemsaidia sana na pia mmenisaidia huko nyumbani na pia kwenda church popote pale. So
kwa majina naitwa Rebecca Madhei, mimi ni mama Benjamin Bahati. Kwanza na shukuru kwa hii programu yenu. Ni asante kwa kukuja mahali hapa. Mm, Benjamin kwa na shida ya cerebral palsy na mkimsaidia na hiyo wheelchair itamsaidia kumleta therapy mali popote pale tunaenda itakuwa inanisaidia kwa sababu ana na anaendelea kuwa mzito nimekuwa nikimbeba kwa mgongo mpaka siku hizi amebandikwa jina nimeaitwa mama bunduki na bebanga tu everywhere i go nimebeba tu kwa hivyo mtakuwa mmenisaidia sana na mbarikiwe wow so yes team bold that is i wanted us to get the of course the consent of the parents so that the parents will tell us what exactly it is we are planning to ensure that probably we can get this this is going to be a project for november so let's see how this can go until next time asanteni now so that's why we are doing for november 100 shillings challenge towards the wheelchair our target is 100,000 and we're giving ourselves an, up to Friday. I believe that if we can clock our budget by Friday, next week on Tuesday, we shall have those wheelchairs. And may God bless you as we work towards our November project. Now, back to the political podcast from Kisi. What exactly happened? Yesterday, Simbarati and uh, Osoro released some video in Kisi language allegedly blaming the governor for some corruption case and he hinted that some, DC, some, some GCU officers will be deployed in Kisi. So until yesterday there were some rumors that Simbarati officers in home were to be raided you know under some investigation you know some uh, some some investigation about a corruption but that was not clear so today in the morning the governor received a call that the officers that he has in gisi in gusi stadium were already gcu this gsu officers were deployed in the stadium in some strategic points and allegedly that governor could not gain access so what he did he left and went there so when he went there, he asked them what exactly they were doing. They were standing there, uh, you know, th that there was some security, something they were doing. But what was then, what the report that then came out is that these officers were deployed in Kisi because there was some court order to come out for the officers to be ransacked. So immediately that court order will come out, maybe they will conduct the raid. But how will you preempt a court order, you know? I, sometimes this country just have our own problem. So, it, that is what happened. And when they left, immediately they were ordered out, they walked out. And so they went to the nearby offices of the border border circle. Some, some two weeks ago, there is a circle that is bringing more than 5,000 border border riders in Kisi together. And they raided those offices, allegedly, that and and you can see them in the video you can see some some fellows because they were in contact they were also with some other members of the public some border border riders there who allegedly went there and took some motorbikes and you know and even took some machines uh, th that there is i think some photocopy machine and some other office stationer from that office and closed that office under the guys that they have been harassing some border border riders from kisi so what exactly is happening here is uh, probably Arati, what Arati did, Arati was working, brought together a circle, there was a circle of Boda Boda people, uh, Boda Boda riders in Kisi. And now the real intention here looks like the officers were just deployed there, they were just deployed in, uh, in the stadium as a smokescreen. But the real intention could have been to go there and make sure that those offices are shut. Now, the governor spoke immediately after this, and this is what he told the press. Therefore, when I came in, I found that the police, they had uh, strategically been positioned, the, the JSU, from all the way the gate to the far end. When I alighted from the vehicle, what I did is that uh, I went ahead to salute them, 
and uh, I wanted to know what, what they were doing in the stadium. Their boss, I think, was in the vehicle. Therefore, I called all of them together just to understand what they were doing here. But this is just sheer nonsense. Misuse of JSU. To intimidate. Because there is no, there is no reason completely. The whole week the JSU have been around, I'm told from reliable sources, there were, there were reckless quotes after we launched the circle for Boda Boda in the municipality. And the, the, the reasoning, and I want to ask the president, uh, you know, the question is, he has been talking about Boda Boda, Mamamboga. Therefore, we did launch the Boda Boda circle here in the stadium, 6,000 of them from the municipality. And these people, that's how we want to shape up their life. But it's unfortunate that uh, the police could have not had anything to do with actually raiding my office. It's only they are being misused just to intimidate us. But there is information. They want to look for anything for arrest. At, uh, arrest Arati, take him to the cells, uh, let him come out after one day. I'm not scared of any cell, any prison. Now, um, after looking at it, the response of the police looks even more unclear. And I, and I think uh, we had a government spokesperson and I listened to Mwaura saying that he will be speaking on behalf of ministries. And as a government spokesperson, I'm yet to hear any statement or any clarification from the government spokesperson. I will, I will look at that in some video. But clearly, what the police are saying about this do not even add up. Mimi pamoja na kamati ya usalama ya county na sub-counties tuilekea pale maofisi ya baadhi ya boda boda mba ulikuwa meyepewa na county government sababu ya kwamba kuna malalamishi kutoka wananji waendeshaji wa pikipiki wanasema ya kwamba mara pikipiki zao zinashikwa zinapelekwa pale mara wanachapwa na pia wanatoso faini uh, ambaye si si halali so leo asubuhi ndio tukaenda pale kuja na DCI mafisa wote wa serikali ambaye wa usalama tumeweza kufunga hizo ofisi na tuka uh, declare kwamba hapo inakuwa ni ile tunaita kwa kizungu scene of uh, crime scene sababu ya yale mambo yanaendelea kufanyika pale. Uh, vile mnakumbuka pia uh, mwezi ujao tarehe 6 uh, mwezi wa 9 mwaka huu uh, tuliweza kupata habari ya kwamba kuna FIFA ya yeah, government stores ambaye kama vile tear gas, vimpo ya kuchapa watu hizo zilipatikana pale. Lakini hiyo kesi tulijaribu kufanya uchunguzi na tukapeleka hiyo file pale kwa ODPP. So, vile tumeanza leo pia, tume, tumeacha uh, uchunguzi yendele. And it shows you that the real intention why these GSU officers are deployed there is not even uh, going to look after those, um, is not even some investigation. The real intention was to go there and close those officers. And this is what I'm saying. That Kenya Kwanza is feeling a little bit threatened by Simbarati in Kisi. And this is why. Or rather, this is what is happening there. Um, before you look at that, kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like our video. Thank you very much for those who support our podcasts from different parts of this country. And uh, we don't take it for granted. Now, there are three things happening in Kisi. Number one, there is a divide and rule scheme. A divide and rule scheme because I think Kenya Kwanza tried by all means to bring Simbarati on their side. And I remember frequent visits that HOS William Samuel Ruto made in Kisi 
even the deputy president Geshego was there, sharing the podium and even coming out publicly to woo the governor to decamp from the Zemu side to join them. And what was the trap? The trap was that if you join Kenya Kwanzaa, then probably you'll be given a UDA ticket and no competitor will be, uh, will be, there will be no competitor against you. But not forgetting that if you have the camp from Azimio and even get UDA and UDA gives you a ticket, you will have an, a competitor from the Azimio Lomoja or more specific from the ODM party. So I even wonder, that reasoning seems not to be coming out. So because Arati seems to have decided that he's not going to shift and one signal that he was not going to shift is the fact that he took actually the position of chairperson of ODM party, a position that was being held by Mbadi. So by the virtue of him taking that position, it's a clear signal that he has declined to decamp. So it is a matter of, so if you can't decamp, then you can't, you must have the minority. You must be the minority. And what's happening here is, especially the border border, that group that is being fought, that border border circle that is being fought, is aligned towards Simbarati. So there is some other faction that has been, you know, marshaled, or rather that has been facilitated to try to divide that circle. Because that circle is a very big voting block, especially in Kisi. Number two, I think this Osoro axis is very clear in respect to the gubernatorial race. And that is how Ruto will destroy Osoro. Just the other day, he was chased from Bomet after he was sent there with some, you know, some deliver, deliver some message. Now, in Kisi, he seems to have been told that you are the next Kisi governor. And that's how it will be done because for Soro, if you go and vie for that governor against Timbarati and lose it, which is highest probability that you lose it against Timbarati, then what will happen? God forbid, even that Kenya Kwanzaa doesn't make the next government. That's how you are done. So there is Osoro axis. Their team Osoro camp is determined that they must dethrone the governor. And the privilege he has is that the majority chief whip is having the trappings of power. And I think he's, he's close, his proximity to the power. Because one thing I can tell you is this. We can draw the national government axis, but this must be local politics at play and some people just feeling insecure. Lastly, there is the border, border rebellion threat. And what Kenya Kwanzaa would not want is organized border border. The border border in the last presidential election is the voter that was most spoken to. Campaign messaging around Kenya Kwanzaa was on Boda Boda. So this is the group that William Ruto will not want to see some sense. If they come together, I'm telling you, he will not want this because we we'll want to stop it from Kisi. Because if it starts from Kisi, then goes to Nyamira and goes to the other counties, if it is replicated in other counties and facilitated, then it, that group can rebel against William Bruto. And of course, the reason why they have the potential of rebelling is because the ones that feel the pinch of betrayal is the Boda Boda caucus. When the price of Mafuta is due, they can't. They can't get it. And I just realized that updates on Hustler Fund are no longer going on. Maybe someone should <laughs> tell us about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I say this again. Never again will we use police on politics. I think that campaign promise, probably even if economy cannot be uh, stabilized, but at least we can stabilize that campaign pledge. Thank you.